How's everybody doing? This is Mr. Nolan, and this is your 6J notes, impacts and contributions of the Roman Empire. Here we go. All right, so we've got some impacts here from an art and architecture standpoint. A lot of Roman art and architecture is going to be adopted from the Greeks. So a lot of it is more just taking what the Greeks did and doing it again. But there are three buildings that you have to remember from ancient Rome. The first one is the Pantheon. Okay? And I really want to point out that it's the Pantheon in Rome, not the Parthenon in Athens. Okay? Parthenon, which is in Athens. They look alike. The difference between the two is, and I'm going to grab a better color here, okay, the Parthenon is just a giant rectangle, the Pantheon has the columns in the front, and it's kind of rounded off in the back. All right, the second piece of architecture that you have to remember from ancient Rome is the Colosseum. You all should know the Colosseum. Okay, it's where they had the gladiator fights and other events like that. So, like, if you've ever watched the movie Gladiator, that's where most of it takes place. All right, the Colosseum is still kind of standing today. They're renovating it, but it's there. And the third thing that you have to remember is the Roman Forum. Okay, the Forum was where they met to debate things, where the Senate met to discuss and make its decisions. So those are your three pieces of art and architecture that you have to know. All right, technology that the Romans created. All right, they have roads. And the biggest thing is that they're paved. All right, paved roads. So paved roads are going to help, again, with ease of transport throughout the empire so that um, you don't get bogged down when the road gets muddy. You have the ability to continue moving your goods along that road. It also helps the road last and not need repair. It doesn't have ruts start to form. These roads were so well put together, they're still paved today. All right? Aqueducts is another piece of technology. And what aqueducts do is they're like long-range piping. They help us move water. Okay? Um, there's not a whole ton of fresh water sources down in the plains near the city of Rome, but up in the Apennine Mountains or up in the Alps, there's a lot of fresh water. So they have these aqueducts to help move water along the down from the areas where they have a lot of fresh water into the areas where they don't. So they develop aqueducts. And then arches. All right? The Greeks come up with columns. The Romans come up with arches. They figure out the technology to be able to get a building to stand up with just an arch. So those are the three pieces of technology that you need to know that the Romans contributed. Arches, aqueducts, and roads. All right, science. Science, okay, so other contributions here, science. We have this guy named Ptolemy, his achievements in astronomy. Now, Ptolemy, the P is silent, he believes in a geocentric universe, okay? And what that means is that he teaches that the Earth is the center. All right, so Ptolemy's achievements are that the Earth is in the center, and that all of the other planets orbit around the Earth. Okay, even the Sun moves around the Earth. This is how he explains things. And Ptolemy is significant, not because he's got all of the answers, because he clearly doesn't, but Ptolemy is significant because his teachings, his thought, are going to shape what Western Europe believes for almost 1,500 years until Galileo and Copernicus come along after the, um, or during the scientific revolution. Okay, a um, couple of achievements here in medicine. In medicine, we have an emphasis on public health. So the Romans place an emphasis on public health, and one of the things that they do to help promote public health is they take baths. Public baths, yes, but they take baths. They have public water systems and medical schools. So they're training doctors. So we have medical schools to help train doctors learn the newest methods and be effective with them. We have public water systems, and by that I'm talking like plumbing, all right? So plumbing is what I mean when I say public water systems. Ways to move fresh water in and old wastewater out, short of taking a bucket and dumping it. And then baths. You would say that baths doesn't seem like such a humongous advantage. Even a public bath where you have to go in there with everyone at you. Um, 
public baths are a huge step forward. We're going to talk later on this year about the Black Death, the bubonic plague. And part of the reason that the Black Death spreads in medieval Europe is because people don't bathe. And when you don't bathe, it promotes things like fleas um, and lice and all of that stuff. And those are carriers of disease. So by bathing relatively regularly, the Romans are able to cut down on some of these ways that disease is transferred. So some of those things that are transferred by insects, they become less susceptible to. That's why we never have a giant plague tear through the city of Rome during the Roman Empire, because they have this emphasis on public bath. They bathe regularly. Um, literature. Uh, literature. The big literature, comp or, um, the big contribution there is you need to know written by Virgil. It's the Aeneid. Okay, and the Aeneid is an epic poem, and it tells the story of a Trojan named Aeneas who flees the destruction of Troy, comes across the Mediterranean on a long journey, lands in the city of Carthage, and eventually his sons, Romulus and Remus, will found the city of Rome. So that, that, that's Virgil's Aeneid. It's an epic poem, very much like Homer's Odyssey and the Iliad, and it's in the same style. All right, religious contributions that come from the Roman Empire. Obviously, we have Roman mythology. Our planets and most of the stuff in the sky and our stars are named after Roman gods. Jupiter was the king of the gods. Okay, so Roman mythology is a big impact on all of that. And then the bigger one is going to be the adoption of Christianity. Yes, we have talked so far this unit about how Christianity was met with resistance. Uh, Christians were persecuted for 300 years, crucified, fed to the lions. You, you, it was a crime just to be a Christian. But eventually, Rome obviously is going to adopt Christianity. Um, Constantine makes it legal, and it's going to become the official religion of the empire. And that is a significant thing, because when it becomes the official religion of the empire, it goes to all of the land in the empire, which at most of the point in time is almost the entire Mediterranean basin, most of what we would call Western Europe, and even up into Britain. So this is going to help Christianity spread. That's why it's a significant contribution, is the adoption of Christianity spreads it throughout the Roman Empire, which is essentially throughout all of Europe. And then we have an important idea here um, from the world of law, which is the principle of innocent until proven guilty. So the Romans come up with the idea that you are innocent until proven guilty. Until this point in time, throughout most of history, the burden of proof was on the charged person. If I was charged with a crime, I had to prove that it wasn't me. The Romans flipped that around and put the burden of proof on the people who are arresting or trying them. And then the last Roman contribution that you need to know is probably, arguably, the most impactful one. All right? The Romans, as we know, spoke Latin. Latin is not a language that anyone really speaks anymore unless you go to um, a Catholic mass at the Vatican. Otherwise, Latin really is pretty much dead at this point in time. Now, Latin, on the other hand, is the root of what we call the Romance languages. Some examples of these Romance languages are French, Italian, Portuguese, Spanish, Romanian, Essentially what ended up happening is all of those places that the Romans conquered, all of those places that they, they captured, so parts of Spain, um, obviously Romania, France, Italy, England, parts of these places, they're going to mesh, Latin gets adopted and intertwined with the local dialect. So French is a blending of what the Gauls spoke back then with Latin. Same thing with Spanish. And then as you guys know with some of these languages with our ages of exploration that you'll talk about in World 2, these languages are going to spread to lots of different places. As you can see here, all of the different countries that speak Romance languages around the world. Among others, almost a billion people worldwide speak a Romance language today. That is arguably the Romans' most lasting impact. And that's going to be all for this video. It's tearing up my heart when I'm with you But when we are apart, I feel it too yeah.